So, hi, this is Sammy Ritchie, and I'm the lead on the Mount Hope Coalition to Increase Food Security. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the background about how we made the decision to work on food security. Um, it really comes from a uh, background of trying to move forward on uh, eliminating health disparities and understanding that health disparities and equity are um, primarily determined by social determinants of health, which is where we live, learn, work, and play. And that's the most important contributor. Medical care is just a, a, a small fraction of, of our health. And I think for the Plan for Health program, what is great is really understanding how planning is is very important about designing our communities and where we uh, where we live, learn, work, and play. Um, when I started some of this work on trying to create capacities for communities to improve their health, um, that's where we were looking at uh, how to eliminate health disparities. I call it now a community health governance model. This really comes from Laughter and Weiss and their uh, article that they wrote in 2003 on uh, broadening community participation. And this schematic really talks about how creating platforms and mechanisms for community-based leadership and management leading to critical characteristics of, of the process for um, improving individual empowerment. We would, in our program, talk about community empowerment, bridging ties, synergy, and that then leading to collaborative problem solving, and that's community health. Um, you could read more about what individual empowerment, bridging ties, and synergy are in the article. But it also it's mainly to show that when we work together, um, we have we build on each other, and it it becomes uh, the whole becomes greater than the sum of the parts. So some of the work that we started was in the Mount Hope um, community, and Mount Hope community is really interesting in terms of this is a mouth as a the. the um, uh, community where the arrows, the green arrows are, um, that is actually the area within Providence that um, we're talking about. It is nestled in the midst of a uh, of a affluent uh, uh, side of, uh, of Providence, um, and so it has. Lot of suffers and has a lot of has a, lot, a very large low income community and I have the 2000 um, census tract just because it's better defined with the 2000 census tract since they were doing block census tracts then and they, they, and so you can actually see the difference differential in income um, to, from the surrounding community and the differential in et racial ethnic makeup so. I, in the community health model, in creating platforms for communities to create community-driven decision making, this community had, had decided in 2004 and was repeated in 2012 that some of their pro top priority areas were um, youth programs and um, looking for one in the clinic, so some issues around health and health education as well as um, being concerned about affordable housing. Uh, some of that issue around affordable housing has a lot to do with the, the gentrification and the push for this low-income uh, area to, um, to, to move out so that there would be space for some of the more affluent people in the community to have housing. Um, if you can see in the map, we are in the middle of College Hill. College Hill right here is Brown University in RISD. Um, and we have neighboring um, hospitals. Also in this picture at the bottom left is the bread line that's in the community. That 
bread line um, and, and it is an emergency food relief, an urgent food relief pantry, and um, a and other other um, donated items for people to use from the community. It was established in in 1985, so it's been in existence now for 30 years, as, uh, and run by Camp Street Community Ministries. While it was Camp Street Community Ministries that was the lead on looking at some of the original community priorities, food was never, and nutrition was never considered a, a top priority. But it does bubble up to the top as um, being an obvious issue and, and, and being understanding that, that with this being there for 30 years, that um, the charity does, is not solved uh, so the, the issue around food security. And so that's why we ended up applying for our uh, grant for the Plan for Health. Um, and in that grant, um, we wanted to create our community leaders, which would be our community health workers, which would help to be a consistent um, uh, body of, of workers and community members that would be able to address the needs and the priorities of the community. Um, as you know, while we did this, in the end, some of the overflow of the work that we did with on this is that it did end up addressing. We were able to address some of those pressing issues around employment and youth employment and training, um, and as well as increasing produce and opportunities for the community to learn about their produce production for greater empowerment um, and self-sufficiency um, self in the future. This model that we created, if you put, if you look at the, the community-based organizations within the community, it's based on an asset map. You're thinking about who in the community, what are the assets of the community. It's not a deficit, deficit model. And here we can take the community-based organizations and we can talk about our uh, coalition members, which were our recreation center, our libraries, our, um, our food council, the Providence Food Council, a number of organizations that work on building gardens, um, our Green Circle Designs, our Southside Community Land Trust, which um, is very uh, strong in creating community gardens and urban, and urban farming. And those were the organizations that we pulled together. They came in and they, and what we have, we talk about in this particular model, So if I, as I was saying, if you look at the community-based um, organization and we consider those as the, uh, some of the coalition members that I mentioned, the idea is that they work with a team, in this particular case, the coalition, having conversations with the community and community health workers. Um, and make the this definition of what the, pro the process should be um, and what the program should be. Our program, not only did we build gardens, you can see some of the gardens we built over here. Um, uh, one of the gardens we have is the, is the recreation center, and then, then this is also us in the lower corner is us sharing these stories with our storyteller uh, on uh, some of the stories were based on, on food. They got the Farmer Will Allen um, book. But those were defining those, those, um, those priorities. And then that is, we take that information to other agencies and institutions, um, such as you know, applying for the Plan for Health grant. And then that idea is that that is the way that we bring resources back into the community. And that, again, helped us establish the current uh, uh, 
burden in our city parks that's within the neighborhood, the Billy Taylor Garden. Um, we also establish a culinary program in which we uh, train called Culinary for Change. And it was a youth-based uh, culinary program for, for teenagers uh, in that very difficult time to, uh, of youth to start to train youth on, on techniques of, look, of, of cooking, but, all, but specifically being feed to table programs that they learn about planting and then harvesting and then making those foods um, uh, for themselves and for the community. And so in the end, what we did is we had a program, because of a system base, and we were looking at a whole system, and not specifically just topically based, you know, understanding what are the issues around uh, what our food policies are and how that impacts uh, the lack of food is, is for communities. Because it doesn't, you don't have to be a a food desert or a food swamp. In our affluent community, we have grocery stores, but it's more like a food mirage. People can see it, but they can't get it. So we are creating other opportunities for the community to take more control of uh, being able to, uh, to grow their own food and, uh, and become more self-sufficient. We're going from food relief to food sovereignty. And that's it. Thank you.